What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to LTH. My name is Abe and I'm your host of this series, How to Set Up a Home Lab. And in today's episode, we're going to cover how to set up TrueNAS Scale. Now, this is a part of our Home Lab series, but if you're here just for TrueNAS Scale, this is also a standalone video. So please continue watching. But if you are unfamiliar, this is what we have covered so far in our series. So if you want to go find our playlist on this channel, please do so. And you can learn about all these technologies from top to bottom. Also, do not forget, we have a website with step-by-step -step instructions, copyable commands, and screenshots if you would like to go slower or if I ever go too fast in this episode. going to need is one a usb drive so we can download and flash etcher to create a bootable usb drive and then i'll actually move my screen over here real quick and you're going to need another device to install truenas scale on <coughs> excuse me and then as you can see here we also have two ssds just so i can show you how to set up a raid and whatnot with TrueNAS scale, and then our single board computer to run it, and then obviously your internet connection to your router or your switch. So those are things you're gonna need to get started. So go ahead and go to truenas.com forward slash TrueNAS scale. Once again, these links will be in our article on our website and click download. And then from here, um, you can you know read through this, TrueNAS minimum requirements, dual core 64 gig, 64 bit, eight gigabytes of RAM, 16 recommended. So if you have a device around this, I would recommend it because it will run better, but could it probably be ran on less hardware? Yes, you just have to remember that TrueNAS scale is RAM heavy because that's how it caches its data and then it writes it to its SSDs. So it is something to uh, consider. And then you can just click ignore on that bottom right so you don't have to sign up or give them any of your information. And then the current stable version is right here and that is the one which we will be using. So click download the stable version and allow this to download and then come back, unpause this video once your download has completed. Okay, so that is done downloaded. If you're watching this as a standalone video, you will need to go to etcher.com. Belena, however you want to pronounce it, Belenia, uh, dot, dot io and download Etcher, but we have already done that from our series, so I'm just going to go ahead and open it right here, and then I'm going to flash from file in my downloads folder. I'm going to just click TrueNAS Scale, click Open, select the target, I'm going to add it to our USB drive that I have plugged in, click Select, and Flash. And then it's going to ask, which your, my screen went black for you guys, but it just is a Windows command process and it asks, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And you're going to click yes. All right, so come back to this video once this is done flashing to your USB device. All right, now that that has been completed, we're just going to go to the bottom left of Windows, click the little up arrow right click on our device and click eject and i'll grab that off the computer and so what i'm going to do is just transition over here and i'm going to plug this in to our device just like that and then i'm also going to need to plug a keyboard and mouse into this device so we can go into the BIOS and ensure that it boots to the BIOS so we can select this as the bootable drive. Okay, now that I have that plug in just under there, I'm gonna grab the power, <clears throat> geez, excuse me, and I'm going to plug it into this device. But before I do that, I'm just gonna move my screen over and then once this is plugged in on that keyboard that's plugged into this Zima board, I'm going to spam the escape and delete key until we get into the BIOS. All right, and we're in the BIOS. So I'm going to just do no, and we're gonna go all the way over to the boot options, go down to options, and then make sure we're on UEFI, SanDisk, or whatever your, your USB device brand name is, but it should say UEFI, where you can see there's the normal drive, 
but we want this partition within the drive. Click save changes and exit, save configuration and click yes and exit. And then we're gonna wait for this device to reboot itself, but via that USB drive. And we're just gonna give this a little bit to download the files. So if you wanna pause real quick, well, you wait for that to happen. You totally can. Um, but I guess that was quick. So <laughs> we're just going to continue. So do we want to do install and slash upgrade? Yes, we do. Click OK. Then we need to decide where we want this information to be flashed to. OK, guys. So if you pay attention, you'll see it just asks you to click the space bar. Click OK through enter and you'll be able to get to the next screen and then this is let you know it's going to erase everything yes uh, which authentication method do we want to use the administration user admin give it a password click tab and click enter All right, so now we can see that it has been successful. Please reboot and remove the installation media. Remove. So on the device, which I showed, so if I transition over here, I'm gonna pull out this USB device here in a minute. Once I click OK with my Enter key, click OK, whoops. We're going to reboot the system. Okay. And then I'm going to wait a couple seconds, pull that out. And then we are going to give this a minute to reboot and show us that screen. So now we can see it doesn't say installation anymore. It simply says TrueNAS scale and the version number. I'm going to click enter and it's going to load from the onboard storage. In this case, on a Zima board, it is eMMC memory. Okay, so that just finished installing, and if I can see this right, it's blurry for me too, and really, really small, but it looks like that IP address is 224. So, let's open here in the browser and see if we can get to that IP address. Okay guys, so what I just did is I went to my OpenSense router and I just found the IP address because I couldn't see in the command line. If you're setting this up at home and you can see the command or the IP address from the command line, awesome. Now one thing to note, with TrueNAS24.x, anything over, they have switched the username from admin to TrueNAS underscore admin. So keep that in mind. And I'm gonna type in the password we created in the command line and we are in. So um, as you can see, this is kind of set up like a lot of other software. We have our main panel, it tells you about your CPU, your usage, your RAM. Like I said earlier, 16 gigs is recommended, but this is just me showing you guys how uh, TrueNAS scale works and the technology behind it for the purpose of learning. So in reality, you'd probably be fine, or if you're just like uploading your own pictures at home on your own, uh, you could do that as well. So updates are available. You can always go in here and check for updates, download your updates. So that would be the first thing that I would do is make sure this is up to date before we go any further. So we're gonna click download updates, um, you can export the SSH password. Warning, the configuration, configuration file contains sensitive data like system passwords. However, SS keys are stored in the root SSH and are not backed up at this operation. So, you know, this is something you should probably do. Um, and, you know, they'll be saved. And then apply updates and reboot system after downloading, which we will do. Okay, so that update took maybe 10 minutes. And so we're going to log back in here after the restart. And then you can like have this checked for updates daily and download if available if you want. If you're worried about like stability or auto updating, you may want to turn that off. And then we go back to our dashboard and we can see everything is working. We have our IP address and all that. And then 
over here, the storage tab is where we need to go to get started. So we need to go in here and create a pool, name this pool, whatever you want. Sandis is what I'm going to name it. If you'd like to have encryption, so if you ever wanna throw away these drives or you're worried about people getting your data, um, then I would do it here. So this is just something to look into, right? Or, uh, you know, something to consider. And so we're gonna go next layout. You can Google these or read about these here of what they do. So like uh, RAID Z1 uses one disk for parity while all other disks store data. RAID Z1 requires at least three disks. What we're gonna use is data mirror. So data is identical in each disk. A mirror requires at least two disks, provides the most redundancy and has the least capacity. So we're gonna take two 60 gig disks and essentially it's going to become one 60 gig disk, but both disks are gonna have the exact same data on them. So if one goes bad, you still have another, you unplug the bad one, plug the good one in, and then it will start uh, writing all that data from the working one to the new one. So you don't lose out. And so you can see width is times two, and then the VDEVs is one, we click next, and then ZFS log device that can improve speeds or synchronous writes, optional write cache that can be removed. So in here, this is just saying like, hey, uh, if you want to stripe or mirror and you have a ZFS disk, like a caching disks, then you could assign them, right? So in here, uh, mirror, disk size, no option, right? Because we don't have anything. So in this case, we're just going to click next. And then automatic automated disk selection with you can set in here as well drives reserved for inserting into data pool vdevs when active drive has failed we don't have any because it's just a mirror and then zfs l2 arc read cache that can be used with fast devices to accelerate read operations once again we're not doing anything crazy we're not going that far so we're skipping special allocation classes used to create fusion pools uh once again we don't have anything you can read up on this if you care to that's up to you. Deduplication tables are stored on the special VDEV type. These VDEVs must be sized to X gigs for every X terabyte of general storage. So it's like a one to 1,000th ratio. Again, not doing it because we're doing a super simple mirror. So we can see data one mirror times two devices and then usable raw capacity. So based on whatever you set, you will come down here and you will see your summary and then we will create our pool. The content of data on all disks will be erased and that's okay. We'll click continue. And now it is creating this pool of our two SSDs shown earlier, essentially as one drive with the same data on them. Okay, so that's like maybe a minute. And now under our storage, we have a uh, data pool, right? Here's the topology. It tells you about the drives. You can go in here and you can manage your drives for all your pools. You can add VDEVs. It shows you the usage. So maybe if you need to upgrade or check or whatever. And then really the important stuff in my opinion is the health. This will tell you, do you have read errors? Do you have write errors? Is one of your drives failing? So you can catch that before, remove that drive and replace it, as well as you can view historical reports and uh, you know all your smart tests that will be in here as it performs them. We just set this up, so it's not gonna show them yet, but this is a great panel to be on, right? To just uh, get oversight, right? Or you can add to your pool, change your pool configuration, or, uh, you know, to an existing pool or do a new pool, right? So like maybe you buy a four bay NAS and you only have two drives in it and you wanna add another pool later and you add another tool to drives, you could come in here and then create a another pool. Well, that's gonna cover everything for this video because I don't want it to be too long, but in the next episode, we are going to go over apps that come on TrueNAS scale and how to install those and run things like that, for instance, next cloud okay guys sorry about that when i searched next cloud i don't know why it just took a while to load but here is next cloud a file sharing server that puts control and security of your own data back into your hands essentially a replacement for like google photos or your iCloud or whatever so we're going to cover this in the next episode but this will allow you to upload text documents pictures and whatever uh, to your next cloud device they also have a phone app and you can partner with your tail scale which i've shown in our previous episode in our series to remotely back up your pictures from your device 
to your TrueNAS Scale NextCloud application. Thank you for watching. My name is Abe, and we are signing out of this episode.